Hi, I'm Heidi Herr, and welcome to Open Doors. I'm the Student Engagement Librarian for Special Collections, and in that role, I create programs and build collections to encourage undergraduates to engage with primary resources. So I'm thrilled to talk to you a little bit about one collection that was built with undergraduate research in mind, and that is our Women's Suffrage Collection, which documents the decades-long struggle for the vote in both England and America. And the collection is super diverse in what it has. It has everything from paper cups emblazoned with the Votes for Women logo to cookbooks that were kind of created for the activist cause to playing cards, a blatant appeal to get men to support women voting. So two of my most favorite pieces in the collection deal with the concept of fashion as activism. And while it may sound kind of, you know, trite or indeed stereotypical to talk about women activists in fashion, it's nonetheless important when talking about the suffrage movement. And that's because the suffragists knew that they, every action of theirs was going to be documented, that photographs of them were going to appear in newspapers and magazines, and that people were going to be reporting on what they were. So it was important for them to have a variety of insignia to showcase that they indeed were suffragists. And sometimes too, this could just be, you know, small buttons that they wore. But other times, these were things that were meant to be seen, such as this portion of a Votes for Women sash, which as you can tell was cut down at some point, but this is a type of sash that women would have worn while on marches. And if you look at it, you can tell that there are three colors purple, green, and white. And these colors are really important because they identify the organization that created the sash. And this sash would have been worn in England by members of the Women's Social and Political Union. And we know this because these are their colors. Purple stands for fidelity, white for purity, and green for hope. The hope that one day soon, women will have the right to vote. But we also have something that's slightly less common. And indeed, it could be very unique. And that is a women's suffrage evening bag. It's a crocheted bag with these two very delicate handles. And if you look at it, you can tell that it has the same color scheme as our Votes for Women sash. This handmade object may have been created by its original owner or it might be an example of the type of item that one could buy at a suffrage bazaar or shop. But what's interesting about this is while we don't know who created it or when it was bought, we do know who owned it. And that's because we have a postcard inside the bag. And by looking at the back of the postcard, we can see that it was sent to a Miss Louisa Chapman who lived in Bristol Lane in London. Now, Miss Louisa Chapman is an example of the type of every woman who is lost to history. Someone who supported the suffrage cause, but was never you know, arrested or maybe perhaps uh, contributed to a large political action. But she nonetheless believed in the right for women to vote and she worked for it, she advertised it, she advocated for it in her own particular way. The Women's Suffrage Collection has been used quite heavily by undergraduates. One exciting thing that students did was actually curate a suffrage-themed uh, display in our Special Collections reading room. The students explored our collection of women's suffrage postcards and created various themes, various topics, various subjects that demonstrated how the American public was dealing with the, the theme of women voting. And this collection lives on online, and you can view it, and it is really, really, really great.